Hi guys, so I'm going to read DC Comics Presents number 27. So TL wanted me to read um, DC Comics Presents number 28 and 29, as well as Weird Science number 2. But I decided, um, because the, the t number 28 is sort of the end of this two-part story, with the first appearance of Mongol, um, I decided to read 27 first. And I also decided to weird, uh, read Weird Science number one, or technically it's number 12, but I'll explain that in that video. But um, I'll, I'll read those before I read um, the, the ones that were recommended, just for like chronological reasons, chronologically. But DC Comics presents Superman and Manhunter from Mars. Excellent, Superman. You have defeated John Johns, precisely as I commanded. Now give me the key that will make me master of the universe. No! DC Comics proudly presents Superman, created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, and the Manhunter from Mars. The key that unlocked chaos. Len Wein, scripter, Jim Starlin, and Quickdraw, artist, Todd Klein, editor, or Klein, editor, letter, Jerry Serp, colorist, Julius Schwartz, editor. Face to face in mortal combat, with the fate of a universe hanging in the balance. It begins here, in the quiet, third floor apartment of reporter Clark Kent as a far famed figure strips down to his working clothes only to suddenly find he has an uninvited audience. So, Superman, at last we meet. It is a moment I have long been awaiting. What? Where it will end? Only the gods alone may know. Funny. I don't recall hearing anyone knock. Just who are you, mister? How did you get in here? I am called Mongol. And your poor attempts at flippancy are wasted on me. I am acutely aware of your vaunted superpowers, Kryptonian. Thus I am transmitting this message to you from the safety of my ship via scrambled signal. A signal even you cannot possibly hope to trace. I have come to you, Superman, because I have need of you. To retrieve an item which, by rights, belongs to me. Sorry, chum, but you said it yourself. I'm Superman, not some errand boy. I'm afraid you don't precisely understand. I'm not asking you. I am ordering you. You will do as I command, or my three diminutive guests will suffer the consequences. I do trust you recognize them. Great Krypton! It's Steve Lombard, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane. But that's impossible. Or is it? I'm scanning all of Metropolis with my supervision, and I can't find a trace of them. Naturally not. Now I trust I finally have your attention. You've got it, Mongol. What is it you want? Actually, my wants are quite simple. I seek a key. A very precious key, carved from the most delicate crystal, and locked away in an isolated crypt. And assuming I can find this Crystal Creek key for you, what then? Then your three friends shall be restored to their normal size, and return to you unharmed. Refuse to help me. And they shall be returned to you in pieces. Enough already, Mongol. You've made your point. 
I don't suppose you have any idea where the crypt that contains this key is located. Why, of course. It is hidden in the fifth planet from the sun of the star system Cygnus. Are you at all familiar with the system? Mongol, you've got to be kidding. The fourth planet from the sun, and that system is New Mars. The home of my former Justice League buddy, John Johns. Yes, I know. Yeah, I'll just bet you do. Then, a heartbeat later... Okay, Mongol. I don't know exactly what your game is, but I'll play it. For now. But as the Man of Steel hurls himself effortlessly into the star-dappled void... Hmm. Looks like I'm not alone. I don't much like that, but I'll just have to live with it. I can't risk antagonizing this mysterious Mongol until I know more about him. But I do know this. No matter what the reason he wants that crystal key, I can't let him have it. I'll have to play for time. Go through the motions until I can get within striking distance and free my friends. It'll be dangerous. Extraordinarily tricky. But that's why they call me Superman, right? If I can't pull it off, who can? Alert, coder, intruder, area loan, crossing, Superman contact. At last, in a star system unimaginably distant, I've scoured this planet from top to bottom, and it's dead, literally barren, except for this solitary crypt. And... As nearly as I can tell, the crypt itself is unlocked, devoid of any automatic defenses, completely unprotected. Makes one wonder why. If Mongol is so powerful, he didn't simply claim his precious key him. Stop! Who? Superman, if our long-standing friendship still means anything to you, do not take... Another step closer to that crypt. John Johns, the Martian Manhunter. What are you doing here? The question, my friend, is what are you doing here? This planet is off limits to everyone. Sorry, John. Didn't mean to trespass. I'll just collect what I came for and be on my way. You don't mean the key. What else? The lives of my friends depend on my getting it. And the lives of worlds beyond numbering depend on it remaining here. I was afraid of that. Look, John. Maybe you'd better tell me exactly what this is all about. Gladly, my friend. If it will bring you to your senses. Centuries ago... There existed a race of beings called the Warzoon, a race to whom conquest was as much a part of life as breathing. In their time, the Warzoon carved a path of death and destruction across half the known universe. But that was not enough. They wanted more. To facilitate their dream, the Warzoon devoted all their efforts to the construction of a special satellite. A satellite that would ultimately make them masters of the cosmos. Nuclear missiles, several miles high, dotted the satellite's surface, flanked by macro-laser cannons capable of incinerating entire worlds. Monstrous engines made the satellite mobile, allowing it to traverse space at incalculable speeds. They called this satellite War World. 
but before they could put their creation to its intended use. The entire Warzoon race mysteriously died. The Largus, a race that was the very antithesis of the bloodthirsty Warzoon, found the last of the Warzoon war chiefs slumped dead at the satellite's controls. Unfortunately, the ultra peaceful Largus could not bring themselves to destroy Warworld, despite the overwhelming threat it posed. So they did the next best thing. They reprogrammed the satellite's defenses to prevent anyone from setting foot on Warworld ever again. Only the sonic vibrations of a certain crystal key would allow anyone to penetrate Warworld's protective screen. And thus, they held the key in safekeeping. Perhaps the Largus preserved Warworld as a last resort doomsday weapon, which might someday be needed to save the universe. Perhaps not. Regrettably, we will never know. For the Largus were an ancient dying race, and the centuries passed swiftly, until, at last, only one of the Largus remained. Knowing his time was growing desperately short, the last Largus searched through all the galaxies for a race to carry on his sacred mission, and found us. The Larga saw how the war had devastated the original Mars, and knew that we who had survived the devastation now prized peace over all other things. Thus, he gave the crystal key into our keeping, made us vow to protect it with all the power at our command. And, his mind now at rest, he joined his blessed ancestors in sweet oblivion. Now, do you see why you cannot have that key, my friend? It is perhaps the single most dangerous object in the universe, and I am sworn to protect it. I understand your position, John, and I sympathize. But don't forget whom you're talking to here. I'm Superman, remember? So why don't you just step aside and let me handle this? Believe me, I know what I'm doing. I really wish I could believe you, my brash Kryptonian friend. But unfortunately, I can't. I gave you fair warning, Superman. A good deal more warning than I would have given anyone else. I did so because you were my friend. But the bonds of friendship can only be stretched so far before they break. So I see. Now, please, John, give it up. You know you're no match for me. Perhaps not. But there is more than one way to skin a cat, as the old earth saying goes. Your approach was monitored long before you ever reached this planet, and certain precautions were taken. But I regret with all my heart that you forced me to use them. <sniffs> Miniature missiles? John, you don't honestly expect these toys to stop me. Oh, but I do. How could John possibly hope to? Huh? Huh? The warheads on those missiles. They're glowing. Glowing green. Great galaxies. Those things are armed with kryptonite. The one substance I'm powerless against. Can't let those rockets get close to me. Only one chance. <sighs> Have to try to deflect them 
with a tight focus blast of my super breath. You're as ingenious as ever, Superman. <laughs> if only you were as wise. Wise enough to realize the chaos you will unleash. <laughs> if you steal the crystal key. Please, John, stop this. Don't force me to fight back. You haven't really heard a word I've said, have you? So long as you seek the crystal key, I must fight you. And more. I must defeat you before... Huh? I meant it, John. I can't let you stop me. Not with the lives of my friends at stake. My heat vision will ignite the carbon-laden ground around us, creating a ring of fire. The greatest weakness of all Martians. No, no, cannot succumb, cannot surrender. Listen to him. The man's a hero in the truest sense of the word. Which just makes me regret having to do this all the more. I'm sorry about all this, John. You'll never really know how sorry. Now please, for both our sakes, just lie there until I'm gone. Slowly, silently, without another glance at the fallen Martian Manhunter, the Man of Steel strides to the enormous crypt his thoughts echoing with his footfalls through the dust-caked darkness. All that pain, all that anguish, for this? It would be funny if it weren't so sad. Look at this thing, so small, so fragile. Will I really be able to protect this key as I planned? It won't be easy. But that's why they call me... Superman? Great Scott! That vessel is the size of a small city. Yes, it is rather impressive, isn't it? Mongol, I would say it's a pleasure finally meeting you, but all things considered... Please... Spare me your so-called humor, Superman. Just hand over the key, and I will be on my way. Sorry, Mongol, but I don't think I can do that. We had a deal, Kryptonian, and you will honor it. Or I will crush your three hapless friends with a single gesture. And do not attempt to destroy the death-dealing circuits on my suit, with your heat vision. Because their demise will then be automatic and instantaneous. You've thought of everything, haven't you? I have done my best. Now I will have what I came for. Give me the crystal key. Superman, no, you can't. Mongol is a monster. Totally soulless. He intends to enslave the stars. Please, Superman. No matter what happens to us, you can't let Mongol have that key. That will be just about enough out of you. The malevolent alien's stubby finger brushes a button on its chest. And instantly... The cube! It's shrinking! Crushing us! Lois, Jimmy, Steve. I will ask you this for the last time, Kryptonian. Give me the key. Superman, don't. If we mean anything to you. Let us die to save the universe. I am waiting, Superman. Then you'll have to wait until doomsday. My friends are right, Mongol. I can't let you have this key. What? Lois, Jimmy, Steve, forgive me. They won't have the time, fool. 
In another instant, there'll be... <sniffs> eh? My cube controls... Shattering? I don't know how you did it, darling. But thanks. Curse you, Kryptonian! You freed them! But I had nothing to do with it. Liar! <sniffs> I won't be thwarted now. Not while I'm so close. Superman spoke true, Mongol. He didn't free your captives. I did. John Johns! You were mad to return here, Mongol. I stopped you from stealing the crystal key once in the past. And I will do so again. No! My plan was flawless this time! <sighs> the Kryptonian was the perfect champion! The one opponent guaranteed to defeat you! Admit your defeat! Curse you! And get out of my way! You're not going anywhere with that key, Mongol. Aren't I? <sighs> Gone. There's not a trace of him. Or that city-sized ship of his. Is this how you intended to handle Mongol, my friend? Forgive me, John. Looks like I failed you. No. Not me, Superman. It's the entire universe that will have to pay for the price of your failure. I warned you that you were dealing with forces beyond your comprehension. But you were just too overconfident, too egotistical to listen. I, I thought I could deal with it. After all, I'm Superman, aren't I? Super or not. You are still a man, and men are fallible. Now, because of you, Mongol is the key that can unlock chaos, and I demand to know what you intend to do about it. First, John, I'm going to construct a protective bubble and return my three friends to Earth. Is that all? That's just the beginning. Next, I intend to hunt up some heavy-duty super help. And then, I'm going to track down Mongol, no matter where in the universe he may be hiding, and recover the crystal key, or die trying. Next issue, the team-up you demanded, the Man of Steel and Supergirl, alone against the menace of War World. So that's the end of this video. Uh, if you guys could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.